I'm Myona, and this is Charlotte, and we're both master students from the School of Community and Regional Planning at UBC. And we're the leaders and planners for the fish feeder and fish ladder projects. So this, these projects were run because of a program that's run through the UBC Learning Exchange. So the UBC Learning Exchange is a community engagement initiative at UBC that since 1999 has been matching community organizations with groups of students who want to serve with community service. And so the projects are based on a need in the community and the project goals are develop, developed collaboratively between the students, the project leader, and the community organization. So together we've um, coordinated and planned two projects and in each project we had three different groups. So one project was a project of fish feeders and the other one built fish ladders. In the fish feeder group, um, they built an indoor fish feeder that could be used in an aquarium. And then there was a demand fish feeder design. And the last one was a retrofit of an existing fish feeder. And in the fish ladder gr group, the uh, three designs that were built were the Danil, the vertical, and the step weir designs. So this is a simple classroom fish feeder that our group designed. It can be made at home really easily. We made it with a clock motor and just put this flat level surface attached to the second hand so that the fish will get fed once a minute. And you can attach it to a timer so it can be fed only a couple times a day so you can alter the amount of food that the fish will get. And the great thing about this is you could actually change the amount of food by altering the size of the hole and the size of the funnel. And so it's really easy to make at home, just as I said, out of a clock motor, a bunch couple pieces of wood, some tubing to make sure it gets into the tank, which you can also alter for your size of tank. And all you have to do is put some food into the funnel, and then when the holes line up, the food shoots down through the tubing into the tank, as it will do now. And the fish gets fed. So that is our simple fish feeder that can be used at home, in classrooms, or in other instances where people can't be there to feed the fish. This fish feeder is used to feed fish when they're in a hatchery and it sits on top of a tank and it uses a conveyor belt mechanism that draws the food towards the gap and in which it falls down. So like the components of the feeder is the cover just to protect from the animals and just the moisture that's coming in the environment. As well we have two different types of film here. The first film is uh, just to have the food not get stuck on, on the conveyor belt as it goes, so it drops perfectly here in the hole. And the one underneath it is just a very strong layer to have it pulled back when you want to set the system. And, and here is the mechanism that you have uh, that propels the system forward and it's effective for 24 hours. We set up our metal piece here to have the roll as it rolls in and the food that might get stuck on the roll have it perfectly aligned with the metal piece that would shave it off if any type of uh, uh, food is actually stuck on it and it won't rot. So that's pretty much a system that would uh, always be in contact with the metal piece at the same time and, uh, and the roller. So what we have here is called an on-demand fish feeder and it's designed for when fry are released from the hatchery um, so they, they can uh, feed in the river uh, whenever they like, so it accommodates problems such as only feeding during daylight hours and not having to be able to feed them and um, it's ideal for places with uh, no electricity and no running water and things like this um, so it's pretty much just fish powered. So I'm just going to step you through uh, a little bit of what each component is and um, how you put it together. So all we have here is just a fishing line with a bead on the end um, coming into a closed hanger that's been cut up with a film cap on the top and then two pop bottles um, one cut and attached here and uh, one on the top and then a string to, for it to hang from so basically um, we needed all the spots uh, all the holes to be filled with silicone so that it doesn't leak and um, the food is put in this way and uh, it when it's hung it'll look like this and the fish can come down and bite on the bead and food will fall from the fish feeder.
Okay, so in order to fill this fish feeder, all you have to do is take the film canister lid and just pull it down. And then you can just lean it up against something so it doesn't fall over. And using a funnel and your fish food, just pour it in, like so. And then before you install it, just be sure to slide the film canister lid down and away you go. This fishing line will be sitting in the water and a fish will see this small little bead that we were showing earlier and it will come and grab it. And when it grabs it, it moves this back and forth and a little bit of food, not too much because you have the cap really tight against there, comes down and they're able to get a little bit of food at one point in time. So um, this is really good because you only want to give them so much food but you want to be able to give it to them all throughout the day. And uh, this is what this system is trying to do. And also it gives them the opportunity to control it so you don't have to have someone sitting there actually throwing fish food in there every 10 to 15 minutes. At the final stage of salmon's life cycle, they have to swim back upstream to spawn. Along the way, they may encounter barriers such as dams, waterfalls, and rapids. And so we put in fish ladders to help the salmon overcome these barriers. Here we have the step rear design. It's a really simple design. What you can see here is that it's more primarily suitable for fishes to reach higher elevation points such as dams, um, pretty much anything that has a slower current so that they can swim by. The fish would normally swim up this way and the step rear design will allow fishes to rest at this point up here and eventually it will make its way and jump and swim past the vertical slot uh, fish ladder design is used primarily for fast moving water that the fish can't uh, overcome by itself. So what we have here is a series of baffles which are meant to disrupt the flow of water and slow it down. And um, there's resting areas here in between each set of baffles where the fish can rest and uh, then they'll just use bursts of speed to get around into the next, next resting zone. So here's the water flowing through, and you can see how it's getting broken up each time it uh, runs into these sets of baffles, and that's just to slow down the overall current so that uh, the fish can pass it. This is a Daniel fish ladder. It's a combination of uh, step here and vertical slot. It's uh, designed for high elevations and fast currents. Um, these baffles are installed so that they would decrease the water flow so that the fish can just swim by and they don't have to jump. That's why it's pretty suitable for the juvenile fish and they also have a resting place at these spots so that they can rest and they don't have to go all the way at once. This project involved many different people. Um, Pacific Stream Keepers was really uh, the host of this project. Um, they came forward with a project idea. And then a group of civil engineering students from UBC also came out to help us actually design and build all these models and fish feeders. And then we also had a lot of help from representatives from the Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada. Um, and then, as we had mentioned earlier, the UBC Learning Exchange has been involved, as well as the School of Community and Regional Planning.